Okay, hello, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about why security is hard. In the last lecture, we talked a little bit about what security is. And hopefully, I'll convince you that security is a little bit more difficult than a lot of things that we do in computer science. So let's phrase the question that way. Why would security be more difficult than most things that we do when we're building programs? Well, first of all, building programs is not easy. It's a difficult task, and some of our digital systems, complex computing systems that we've created, are some of the most complex artifacts that human beings have created. And so that's a hard task. So why does adding security make it any more difficult? Well, I'd like to suggest to you uh, that there are a bunch of different reasons, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention five of them. First of all, most of the time when you build uh, a computing program, a program, what you're concerned about is that something good happens. But security, on the other hand, is about ensuring that nothing bad ever happens. What do I mean by that? Well, if you think about writing a program, say, to uh, play a game of checkers, what do you want that program to do? Well, you want it to respond when, the, when your opponent makes a move. You want never to have your program make an illegal move. And it would be nice if your program won a game now and then. Okay, so you could write a specification that basically says that. But what you're not concerned about typically is that your program, after say the fifth move, copies the contents of your complete hard drive and sends the results to Kuala Lumpur. Or on the other hand, uh, overwrites the contents of your entire hard drive. Those are computer security problems, but they're not functionality problems. And so you might not even think about those kind of things when you're writing a program. So that's the first reason why computer security is difficult, because you have to worry about bad things not happening. Well, if that's the case, how do you even characterize the set of bad things that might happen? Well, think about how you might spend your afternoon. Right? You might write a list of all the things you want to accomplish today but you probably would be very hard pressed to write a complete list of all the bad things that you don't want to have happen to you today. You know, surely you don't want to get hit by a bus, you don't want to lose your job, you don't want to maybe get an F on a test, but you know, it's an infinite number of things that might go wrong and characterizing those is difficult. Um, that leads to a, a, a kind of a, a, an interesting question and that is if you were the defender of a program, you know, you've got to find all the bad things that might happen, but an attacker, on the other hand, only has to find the good things, or excuse me, not the good things, but find one bad thing and, and make use of that uh, to attack your program. And that leads us to this one, right? Unlike most things that you do in computer security, you're concerned with, an, with defeating an actively malicious attacker, right? And so uh, a famous uh, computer scientist by the name of Ross Anderson characterized this as programming Staden's computer, meaning that when you write these programs, you have to worry about sort of, you might say, the minions of hell out there trying to defeat everything that you're trying to do and come up with malicious ways of, of destroying your, your, uh, your good work, right? Um, anyway, so that, that makes it very difficult because now not only do you have to worry about your program behaving correctly, you have to worry about the possibility that one of these guys will come up with some clever way to use some feature of your program that you hadn't even imagined might be used in a malicious way. Okay, so a fourth way, a fourth thing, uh, a reason why security is hard is that uh, information management systems are very complex systems, which means that there's a lot of targets of attack. And not only the software, but also the hardware, the storage media, the peripheral devices, and also the people, right? So you could have the most technically secure uh, system in the world, and if, if you have a clueless C a CEO in your company and somebody can call him up and say, hey, I'm Joe from, uh, from IT, I need your password, and he gives it to him, well then, uh, sort of all bets are off. And so we have what's called the principle of easiest penetration, which says that when somebody's attacking your program, they're going to find the weakest link. And so you as the defender have to close all of the weakest links, in fact, all of the links, if you want your program to be absolutely secure. 
And then finally, uh, why do people write computer programs? It's usually not for them to be secure. It's for them to do something. Think about our checkers program, right? We want it to play checkers. And so uh, if it plays checkers, well, we'll give it to our friends or we'll sell it or whatever. Um, but, you know, we don't think about security as one of the key reasons why we wrote that program. And so we may think of security or treat security as kind of an afterthought. And there may be lots of uh, flaws within that program from a security standpoint, even if it plays checkers flawlessly. And so that's a real problem. And so uh, in particular, um, we, we add these security mechanisms to our program. And if the security mechanisms are uh, not transparent, that is they're difficult to use or they cause us not to, they cause our program not to run as quickly or they, they cause our program to be harder to use, well, we may have a tendency to, to subvert them, to turn them off or to uh, otherwise disable them. And that's a problem. Right. So what's the bottom line? Well, it's this. When you write uh, programs, you're never going to have perfectly secure programs. Right? Here's two interesting quotes that I've found. Um, and one of the interesting things about them, they, they, they're sort of cynical about the possibility of, of uh, getting perfect security. The interesting thing, one interesting thing about them is the quote from Bob Morris was in the early 80s. The quote from Fred Chang was in 2009, almost 30 years later. And they're basically saying the same thing. You're not going to get perfect security. Despite 30 years of work, very vigorous work in this, in this field, to try to attain security. And so does that mean we haven't done anything? No, but it just means that perfect security is probably an unattainable goal. And so if security is meant to uh, keep bad things from happening, and we can't always reliably do that, what can we do? Well, we just have to manage, uh, we have to treat security as managing risk in our system. And one of the things that that means is that we have to make a trade-off between security and the other things that we want to have happen in our, in our system, like functionality, usability, efficiency, and so on. Right. So what have we learned? Well, I've tried to convince you that security is difficult for several reasons. And since you can't attain perfect security, there's always a trade-off between security and the other system goals, like functionality, or usability, or robustness, or efficiency. Thank you.